the biggest fear of many studio owners and instrument teachers is that they can feel like they're spamming their clients with all the information that needs to be shared. And yet, at the same time, there are important dates and information parents need to know. This is where a simple music studio newsletter comes in. I'll be sharing what to include in your studio newsletter so that it does actually get read. And be sure to stick to the end because I'm going to be sharing tips that I use to help me get these written and scheduled out quickly and easily each year. We have to think about the Goldilocks zone. A lot of the decisions that I've made in my studio have come from being a parent myself. Too much communication from the school was incredibly overwhelming. Too little was massive stress for our family. We don't want to have either of those for our clients. In terms of the Goldilocks zone, be sure to check the article in the description. I'll actually go into a little bit more detail there in terms of what the Goldilocks zone can include. The goals are to keep parents happy and informed at the same time to make sure that your admin time is less because you have less questions coming in. What do you include in a music studio newsletter? For starters, keep it really simple. Less is more. Make sure that it's really scannable. Imagine that the parents in your studio, they're probably reading your newsletter while they're in line at the grocery store or they're waiting to pick up their kids. It's short snippets of time. You need to make sure that it's something that can be scanned quickly and they can pull the information that they need. A few things that do need to be on each newsletter are if you have a studio theme. This is something you would announce maybe at the beginning of your academic year or term. Any incentives or challenges that are going on so that parents Parents know, oh, okay, my kid is practicing more because there's this thing going on. Group lessons, recitals, or other events, and any holidays that are coming up. The other two pieces of information that you need to include are how to register for anything that is happening in your studio and an invitation to ask questions. I know I said we do this so that we get less questions, but by putting that invitation out there, we very quickly learn what our clients maybe aren't getting from the newsletters and we can tweak future ones. So that way we get less questions in the future. What does this all look like in action? I'm going to show you a sample studio newsletter. This is based roughly on the format that I use in my studio. And while it's in a Google Doc, it'll give you at least a rough outline of what you need to do. Here we have our studio newsletter. The first thing is if you have a logo, put it at the top. It just makes it very clear right off the bat what to expect. Make sure that it's personalized. So hi, first name. This is really easy to use if you're using Using an email marketing platform, we're going to follow the KISS principle. Keep it simple, seriously. In our intro paragraph, keep it about three to four sentences. Just highlight your theme or focus for the upcoming month. That way parents feel like, okay, I know what direction things are going. These dividers are actually really important because as you can see visually, my eye is going to move from section to section and I know exactly what to expect. I make sure that there's any reminders. So do they need to do anything special? You know, do they need to attend a lesson, print something off, encourage this recital practice happens? Just make sure it's really simple and to the point and keep it positive. For events, do a quick description of the event, get them really excited about it. Why should they care that this is happening? Include a link in two different ways. The first is what's called a hyperlink. Right here, I have hyperlinked the text. That way, if for whatever reason this button doesn't show, not a problem. They're going to click on that and it'll allow them to register for it. You'll also have a nice brightly colored button. This again stops the eye, letting your client know they're going to do something here. If we scroll down, we've got some important dates. Now, this is actually based exactly on what I do in my studio. So each month you can expect three months of important studio dates. Since I know family life can be very busy, please mark these on your calendar. Why three months? It's long enough in advance that if they're thinking about enrolling in an extracurricular activity or they're thinking about doing a holiday holiday of some sort, you probably have first dibs because you've already made it onto their calendar, which means that you're less likely to get removed from that calendar. For example, you write down the month, the day, and what's happening. So in September, in my studio, September 5th was Labor Day, office was closed. The week that first lesson started, anytime that the office is closed, for a non-holiday reason and if they need to RSVP or there's an event happening. And you can see for October, same idea, and then November, same idea. And so because it's in a Google Doc, you're going to see the Your Studio logo. 
logo that wouldn't actually show. Below that, I've actually set an expectation for when I will return communications with my clients. On the weekends and evenings, all emails, texts, emails, etc. will be returned once I return to the office. Typically, I return emails weekdays in the early afternoon. This way, clients see every single month, this is when I can expect to hear from you. And I give them another way. Our studio Google Calendar has all the studio announcements to the end of June. This can be found at and then you're going to include a link to it. Is anybody going to look at the calendar online? Probably not. But again, you're giving another option that if they don't want to find this newsletter, but they've seen this link over and over and over again, they can go there. The next thing we're going to do is add a little personalization, their name, ask a question, or just give them a quick reminder of something. Sally, you know what? I'm really looking forward to seeing the kids at group lesson. Make sure that you register ASAP. If you have any questions about studio events or lessons, just hit reply all the best, and then put your name. At the bottom, include some icons linking to your studio social media channels. This is really important because it gets them over there. You can make sure that there's also announcements there, and it's another way for them to see what's happening in your studio, which makes them just fall in love with it even more. So now that you've seen what to include in your studio newsletter, I'm gonna give you a few secret tips. First, create a template, kind of like what I did here. You're gonna create the design once, and you're gonna copy many times. I always find that the first newsletter takes the longest, and that's because I'm checking how it looks. I'm not only checking how it looks on my computer, but I'm also adjusting the size so I can see what it looks like on a cell phone. I also know that that's where clients are going to probably be reading it. So I want to make sure that everything looks good and it's not looking overwhelming. The other thing I'm going to do with that is once it is designed, that first newsletter that say the September one for October, I'm going to copy September and then I'm going to rename it October, change the details. And this is where that three months comes in really handy. All you're going to do is delete the previous month. So for October's newsletter, when I've copied it from September, I delete September. I've got October, November already written out. I just have to add December. So this saves a little bit of time and you don't have to rewrite everything. The other thing you're going to do is start planning backwards. I know that oftentimes we think I have to plan lessons each week. However, by really taking a big step back and looking at what is going to happen over the course of the year in your studio, it makes a really big difference and it allows you to get these newsletters done quickly and easily. It's actually one of the biggest tips I can give you. So start with the annual. Figure out when are the holidays? For example, if there's a winter or a summer break, when is that happening? Is there a spring break? make sure those dates are written down. If there's studio events that are happening or challenges, figure out what dates those are, write them in a spreadsheet, on a calendar, wherever, and then you're just going to plug those in to the newsletter. A good chunk of the newsletter was actually those dates. That's because that's what our clients care about. They don't necessarily care about all the nitty gritty details. They want to know what's happening and they want to know how to register for stuff if they need to, but they really want to know what are the dates that are happening. The last tip I'm going to give you is make sure that you use an email marketing system. There's lots of them out there. There's MailChimp, ActiveCampaign, MailerLite, and a lot of other ones. I started off basically doing a Word document and I emailed everything manually. The problem with that is it all relied on me and me being at my computer at the time. If it was a busy week, if something happened with my kids or whatever, that newsletter did not get sent out. Or all of a sudden it's 1030 at night and I needed to turn on my computer. Have you been there? Nobody wants to do that. What we're going to do instead is we're going to use a program to do it for us. It goes out consistently. Parents or your adult students, they know when to expect this. So then it becomes a habit. It becomes routine for them to check their email and actually read and follow through on what you're asking them to do in it. Getting clients to read your music studio newsletter can be easy, so long as you make it timely, simple, and easy to use, meaning that you've got those links to register right in there. At the same time, getting your studio newsletters written and scheduled out ahead of time means that you're saving a lot of admin time and a lot of stress, which means that you get a little more balance. You're not at 1030 at night, like I was, suddenly running to your computer to send messages to your clients. To find out how I work backwards when I do these newsletters, 
be sure to check out the article, Keeping Clients in the Know. There you'll find out more about the process on how I work backwards, as well as get a link to a free newsletter guide.